Hello, welcome to the basement. Got a little Norval engine here and just can't get this thing to run right. It has moments where it revs up properly and, but yeah, uh, had to cave and tear it apart and see what's going on. Um, basically the symptom is it, it, it tries to rev up, but it's like it has a load on it. So something, something's dragging pretty bad. And, uh, I've kind of, there's a couple wear marks on here that give us some clues as to what's going on. Uh, here's the first one. You can see this. You can see this circular pattern kind of carved in the back plate. And what that is, is the crankshaft, um, holds the piston connecting rod and the connecting rod sticks out a little bit further than this crank pin that it runs on and you can also see that there's some wear here so we know that this is for sure touching the back plate because we've got some uh, scoring and the other culprit um, or potential candidate is perhaps the cast aluminum uh, crankcase itself um, is, is a little bit um, too much forward where uh, this crank step is. And there's this little washer that goes on here. They call it a thrust washer. And it's got some wear on it as well. And you would expect to see that here because this thing's spinning around at 20,000 RPMs or whatever. And so the other pinch point could be is if this is sticking out a little bit, and when all this is um, tied on and there's a prop on here, it could be rubbing here a little bit. I have a feeling it's the crank. Um, like I've run maybe eight ounces through this thing. It's nice and broken in. It's a new to me motor. I, I think the previous owner probably had the this issue and didn't know how to remedy it. But yeah, uh, so what I'm gonna do is just take some sandpaper and see if I can get rid of this. Um, I also checked um, with the feeler gauge here just to see if uh, like the space between the crank pin and the back plate. This little I'm not sure if you can quite see it, but there's a gap to see if that uh, is is appropriate. And it's to spec, which is 0.1 of a millimeter. It's definitely it's big. It's larger than that, so that's definitely not the issue. So I'm going to go with, it's probably uh, the crank or the connector rod rubbing on this. So I'm going to take a little bit of material off of this, smooth it up, and I'll put it back together, see how it feels. It's really when the engine warms up is, is when you start to have this, this issue. But when it's cool, you can't really tell. Uh, so, so I think a little light... Um, removal of material here should probably do it. Okay, so we're all set up to uh, clean this up. And uh, what I got here is just a glass mirror. It's nice and flat. And what I'm going to do is um, kind of some advice that was given to me from a machine shop um, that did uh, top end rebuilds for two stroke motorcycles and whatnot. And they suggested to if you want to keep the surface as flat as you can, to do just nice slow figure eights and let the sandpaper do the work. Try to keep the pressure even. Uh, so you can see that uh, I'm just doing the, the sanding here and I've removed the scoring from the connector rod and some of the ionizing is starting to come off. It looks like it's kind of high in the middle. As you can see, the aluminum and where the ionizing kind of boundary is. And uh, so I'm basically flattening this up and I'm going to take, I think, all the ionizing off of at least the connector rod path, which is just a bit bigger than what this is. And we'll give that a try. And hopefully that'll create enough clearance that um, it won't be dragging anymore uh, when running. So, <clears throat> quick cleaning has revealed something else to me. 
Um, looks like there's a little bit of galling on this crankshaft. And what I'm going to do is just polish this up and put it back in. It doesn't look bad, but you can kind of see the difference between um, here and here. It's cloudy and here it's shiny. So it's possible the crank fits a bit tight and might just need some a uh, little bit of scotch bright to uh, clean it up. So all I'm going to do is chuck this in a drill. Okay, we're gonna put this thing back together. The crank's all polished up, looking nice. I'd also like to uh, thank all the folks on the Cox Engine Forum uh, for kind of guiding me on this journey to repairing this engine. Um, Jim, Deli, Half A Nut, uh, Rock and Rusty. Um, I think we're about there, so hopefully this does it. If you've never put one of these back together, this is, uh, I'll just go through as I do it for what's important in case you forgot. I'm going to start with the crank, just give it a little, some oil to help it. I'm wondering if it might be the crank that's the thing, but I don't know. I'll run it. It should be better now. And now we put the piston in. What's important about the piston is this, this groove in the back should go to the back of the motor. And that's uh, for clearance for this back plate. Make sure your ports are lined up, uh, the big ones, the exhaust, and all the little guys, you can see them. Uh, some ports here, port here, port here. Just want to line the holes up with that. Make sure your gasket's on there. Give this thing some oil, makes everything go a little easier. With some luck, this will be hopefully the last time I have to do this. I do enjoy kind of fixing stuff up. This one, it's almost got me beat. I think I've invested quite a bit of time into this. More than uh, other motors.
sure where black played on. Oh, might as well oil these good. And that's basically it. Uh, you got your four bolts for the head and um, your thrust washer and this uh, little clamp, re clamp ring thing goes on. I guess that's your, where your prop mount washer is. Then you put this guy on and then what's left is your muffler. So we'll give this another go and see if she rips again. Well, it never ripped to begin with, but... Okay, so not the best of conclusions. This thing has some kind of major defect and it just will not rev up. Um, it's under constant load and it's difficult to turn over. So the symptoms haven't been corrected with those previous modifications. And like I said, I, I think it's, uh, it's, I think it's had a, a significant defect. It, I'm pretty sure that the crank is misaligned with, it's not perpendicular to the cylinder. And what's happening is the connector rod is interfering with uh, the crankshaft itself and they're rubbing each other. And there's really nothing you can do about that. It, it's a good chance this was made Friday afternoon at 4.30. I mean, they're, they're mass produced. Sometimes you get a good one. Sometimes you get one like this. So this is going to go on the shelf for parts. Uh, I've sunk enough time into it. I feel like I've given it um, an honest chance to... Uh, perform and it's just not going to do it. Um, I did. So what did we learn? Uh, I finally figured out how to mount one of these APC props. Um, they don't come for some reason. These smaller ones this is a six by three. They don't seem to come with uh, like the bushing that you need for uh, to get a nice good fit on the on the prop screw. So what worked perfectly, believe it or not, is one of these. Um, it's like a linkage. Uh, straw for RC. Just cut a little chunk of that up. Fits the space perfect. Perfectly centered, no vibration. The prop balancing I did, it, like this thing just from that department, it was really, really good. Thanks for watching.